drop forehand. That's the big key, and uh, just time will tell. So we're about to start with the women's final. Drop to serve. It is somewhat overcast, breezy. Flags are standing just about straight out, so it'll be a little gusty on court, and it's a little bit chilly. Drop to serve. We say it every time, Fred, because it's basically true. We know it from fact, but uh, both players have to be a little bit nervous. And as a player, you're always happy to win that first serve. And that's a nice way to go about it with an ace. I was talking to Pavel Slows or Steffi Graf's coach in the locker room or just 45 minutes ago. And I said, well, how long do you think this will take? It'll be a quick one because Steffi's matches up until the semifinals averaged about 44 minutes. He said, a Grand Slam championship, he said, I'll take it in three sets. Doesn't matter as long as it's a win. Absolutely. And if you go out there, you talk to your player about how fast you can win, that's a really dangerous thing. Zereva to serve for the first time in this match. This would be a big game for Zverev if she could hold on here, sort of get settled down. First Grand Slam final. a big step from being world junior champion as this young lady was in 1987 the trophy was presented to her the other night and the world junior boys champion Jason Stoltenberg from Australia and then suddenly a few days later you're on centre court in a Grand Slam final against the number one women's tennis player in the world Smart serve to go wide because Groff wants to step around and hit the forehand, so she was sliding toward the center. coats and the umbrellas so it's starting to drizzle uh, the umpire requests the 16,500 people not to make any noise but it starts to rain on him and he's got a problem Now, 
uh, break point for Groff. That's the kind of error that Zareva cannot afford to make because she is the steady one. She tries to move you around, get you running, and then hopefully pull an error out of you. So just trying to float one back deep and get it high on the backhand side of Graf and she Again, constant pressure by the number one player in the world with that forehand. She can move you from side to side here. She gets very able over in the backhand corner and now just pulls that ball hard and deep. It's tough to handle. So now we're looking at the second serve of Groff. Provis in the semifinal. Uh, Nicole has a pretty good oh, forehand, as we see Philippe Chatrier, the president of the International Tennis Fe Federation, also of the French Tennis Federation. But Nicole Provis has a good forehand, what we might call a heavy forehand, but nothing quite as explosive as that of Steffi Graf. 40-0. What he loved. Darker and darker overhead. Zareva played uh, many drop shots in her semi final against Nicole Provost. She hasn't had that opportunity so far, anyway. Yeah, when you're on the defensive and being pushed around, it's tough to, to start making drop shots, isn't it? Game to Steffi Groff. She leads three love first set. They have uh, postponed play. They've, the players are packing up to get off the court. Steffi Groff leads three games to love. And this may not be a bad thing, Fred, for Zvereva because uh, obviously she was nervous. She appears to be outgunned by Groff, but this will give her a chance to settle down and think about it. And, probably come out and be a little more um, uh, deliberate, a little more aggressive, not necessarily charging the net, but, but hitting out a little bit more. Of course, she has the opportunity to go in and talk to her fellow players and coaches, and uh, Olga Morozova, who was one of their fine players from the Soviet Union in the days of Margaret Court, is here, and uh, she's experienced on this surface and uh, can give us some advice, and will certainly will help her, because to get out here the first time, you've got to be nervous. The second time, you know how many people are in the stands, you've had a look, you know what's going on, and you should be a little more relaxed. Steffi Graf and Natalia Zvereva. Again, in case you've joined us late, we had a rain delay after Graf got out to a three-love lead, and uh, players had to go back in. They covered the course, and we had a huge deluge. As you can see, the players coming down, about to come out on the court. They will have a uh, five-minute warm-up, according to the rules, and again, here come the players. So this is really almost like starting over for them, except that uh, Graf is, is ahead three love. 
and uh, they they will again get their five minute warm up. And Betsy, you know, it just reminded me of something. It's been a long time since I walked out of that entry onto the center court. You come really from darkness to sunlight, and it takes you a few moments to adjust, doesn't it? Well, I've made the walk, Tony, not because I was playing out there. Actually, it's the one center court I've never been on. Uh, I've practiced on it, but as you say, it, it's it's funny because you go down about uh, two and a half flights of stairs, uh, and then you come out to what's now a beautiful day, blue skies and sun's looking like it wants to come out in full strength. And uh, but those girls have made that walk now a couple times. So. Do you think that Zvereva now, just sort of looking at her, is she maybe more relaxed than she was before? Well, Tony, you know, I must say I saw her in the locker room before she came out, uh, about an hour before she started this match, and uh, she looked very uh, calm and relaxed, although I'm sure inside there are a lot of butterflies happening. And, uh, yeah, I think the break has to, has to help her. As I said, it's probably going to take her a little bit just to get back into the groove of things again. But uh, just having made that first entrance out there and gotten the 10 minutes, uh, although it was three quick games for Graf, but just being able to start the match has to have gotten rid of some of the butter initial butterflies. Now, the tennis balls they're using are not the balls that they played the first three games on. They are other tennis balls that would be somewhat similar. They will warm up with those balls. They will be taken out of play, and the six tennis balls they started with will be used uh, once this match uh, commences once again. Let me ask you another question, Betsy. Um, uh, what do you think Steffi Groff's chances are of winning the Grand Slam, for example, this year? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but she's already won in Australia. She's, she is the heavy favorite here. And, of course, uh, the, the true test could be coming up at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. Faster surfaces where uh, Martina Navratilova is a more effective player. Well, you know, Tony, it's interesting. If it were a reverse, meaning if the U.S. Open happened before Wimbledon, I'd say Steffi Graf could get three three titles under her belt. Uh, but I feel Graf is her least uh, favorite surface. That's the surface where I believe she's more vulnerable because she, she is not as comfortable with the serve and volley. And you just have to play that way on Graf, especially against Mar Martina Navratilova, who's going to do that to Steffi. But uh, I'll tell you, she has a great shot of winning the U.S. Open. Well, and also uh, on grass, I, I agree with, I think, Steffi, it's her most difficult surface. She takes a big, such a looping swing at the forehand uh, and really uh, is somewhat late in preparing the racket at times. And if you get some uh, devious bounces, as you will get on a grass court, uh, some different bounces, it's more difficult, I think, for that type of player to prepare. I think that's why Lendl has a difficult time on the grass. I agree. I think another problem that a lot of uh, players who are particularly good on a clay court uh, the reason they have problems on grass is because uh, of the different grips on clay courts. You get away with uh, western grips, and it seems like western grip players have a very difficult time on a faster surface. They have a difficult time with slice approaches and volleys. So and that's something Steffi Graf is going to obviously get better over her years um, with the half volleys and the volleying. But it, it takes it'll take a while for her to get used to that. So again, you see the finalists rewarming up. A moment ago, they showed you a glimpse of the nice blue sky that we have now. So it looks as though we have a real good chance of uh, finishing everything today now. Uh, the winds have died down somewhat. And so while the, the ladies are finishing their, their warm-up, we'll take a break and be back at Roland Garros in just a moment. World of Sports, ball boys and ball girls lined up behind the court. They want to see this final. They've done yeoman work throughout the, this two-week event. And uh, just like officials, uh, if they go unnoticed, you know that they're doing an excellent job. And I would certainly take my hat off to all the ball boys, ball girls, and the officials. Uh, they've, they've done a, a wonderful job. There have really been very few disputes. And again, while we have a moment uh, from all of us, we'd like to express our thanks to Philippe Chatteret, the president of the French Federation, who is so nice to everyone here, players, officials, uh, spectators. They've done a terrific job. So you can see that uh, everyone's eager to have this match resume. 
and Betsy, can we expect uh, some sort of uh, patient play, uh, uh, somewhat careful play as they start back up, or do you think they'll come out just hitting it hard again? Well, I think Steffi Graf's plan is to is to just crank it right back up again, and she uh, has a huge forehand, which I'm sure she'll... I think she wants to just get this match under her belt as quickly as is absolutely possible for her. And we change modes. You can see that they're changing the balls uh, again back to the ones that they used initially in the first three games, the balls they warmed up with, and now they'll use the balls they started off with. Zareva does not have a, a power game. She's able to mix pace, mix spin, speed of the ball. She's not a power player. They were, it's been exactly one hour since the rains Zero came. Guys. Zero time. Steffi Graf's coach in the front row there, Pavel Slavel from Czechoslovakia, and Mr. Graf sitting just behind Pavel there. Yeah. Another break for Graf, who now leads four love. Vareva at the moment is just being uh, outgunned here. You're on the tour. She joined the tour last year, playing both the junior events as well as professional tour. That's the second ace from Steffi Graf. Uh, she's won seven points in a row. Much has happened. Not too much has happened since the rain delay. Uh, I was over in the players' lounge area, and Steffi wasn't. Steffi Graf wasn't getting too many points as far as the playing was concerned. She was playing cards, trying to keep relaxed. And the way things are going now, five love, love 30. This could possibly be the quickest women's final they've had here at Roland Garros ever. And I feel sorry for a young Natalia Zareva because she has beaten some good players to get here, but Steffi Graf is not going to give her 
any margin at all here in the final, and neither she should. Zero. So Rava hasn't won a point in uh, three games, in fact. Well, we lost 1540, and the crowd gave the Raver a big cheer. Ruff her. has not lost a point on serve in this match as yet. I know that. straight back down the court to Steffi Graff and she just put it back into the open. First set, six games to love. Well, because of Graff's powerful forehand, she can totally exploit the weakness of Zvereva, which is running to the forehand side. If she has time, she hits her forehand very well, but if she doesn't have time, she really struggles. Least games played in a women's singles final was when Susan Longwell, the great Longwell in 1926, beat Kay Brown, 6-1, 6 love. Doesn't give us a time on that, though. That is the... Uh, these games in the final. I think Zareva will win a couple of games in this second set. I'd like to see that happen for her. Double fault there from the on the usual occurrence. This young lady, though, Betsy, I think is just so nervous out there now. Oh. Having been and just taken to the cleaner so easily in the first set, it's pretty difficult to get on track. Exactly, Fred. I mean, it was one year ago today she was winning the junior title here at uh, Roland Garros, and now here she finds herself in the finals of the main event, and that's got to be a little overwhelming for her. And so, Graf, welcome back once again to Nine's Wide World of Sports, our live coverage from State Roland Garros, French Open Tennis Championships, women's singles final. This entire crowd, Betsy, is sparing a thought for the young lass from the Soviet Union because I think at this stage she's embarrassed to be out there and the crowd are trying to get her going, trying to help her as much as they can. Her match is up until the semi-finals. It averaged like about 44 minutes per match. As you see the split screen of four hands there with both players, and they asked her, uh, does she ever let up on opponents? She said, no, I'm out there to win. Why should I? I can't feel sorry for them. Well, that is one of the trademarks of the way Steffi Graf plays tennis. She's just terribly business-like and, and walks very quickly in between points. She just tries to to beat opponents as badly as she can. Exactly what one should do. <laughs> and the crowd loves it. That's the best point Zareva's played. Well, she's not giving up, Betsy. She's chasing everything, doing the best she can under the circumstances. Good footwork from Steffi Graf. Just watch her feet. She's always moving. She goes forward into that volley. She didn't put that away, and she really could have. Natalia was asked in the semifinals, after the, in a press conference after the semifinals, if she thought she could beat Steffi Graf, and she thought for a moment, and she said, no, I don't think so. And the two-handed backhand is long, so Graf now leads. Two games to love, second set. 
she's also asked then, well, you beat Martina, and if you play like you did against Martina, do you think you have any chance? And she says, uh, maybe, but I don't think so. There weren't too many people that believed they could beat Steffi Graf. And she had a couple of losses, only had two losses the entire year before last, and both of those were to Martina. And this year so far, she's already lost twice to Sabatini. I think there are a couple of players that now believe they might be able to beat Steffi Graf. Well, if she wins this title, Betsy, that will give her two legs on the Grand Slam this year. What chance do you give her of winning Wimbledon? Well, we were talking about that earlier, and I think Wimbledon grass is her least favorite. 40 love once more. Graff in this match to date has yeah, lost one simple. point on serve. She did not lose a single... Well, she lost one point on serve in the first set and one in the second set, so that's two points on serve in this entire match. Good point again from Zvereva. She gets away with this drop shot, it's rather high. But good get there. That's a good side as very over the backhand side. She can control that ball very well. I think that's the only opportunity she's going to get to play the drop shot, Betsy, is off the return of serve, and that's a tough one. But if she wants to use that tactic, she's not going to get too many not going to get too many other chances out of it. Precision and power on that return of serve. It was a short serve and it was dealt with very harshly by Gruff. The serve is very, very attackable, especially the second serve. She really doesn't get much on it at all. Yeah, certainly not, and uh, rightly so. I know that uh, we get another look at this last point where she wrong foots Zvereva, who's looking for the, the backhand. I know that Steffi Graf believed in, in the semifinal match against Ga Gabriella Sabatini. She felt that was really the finals of this event. Both girls felt that. Martina and Chris both out. Backhand slice from Steffi Graf. I must say that Natalia Zareva is a really pleasant girl, good personality, which is reflected upon her coach, Olga Morozova, who was the last Russian in the finals of the French Open in 1974. not giving an inch there, just putting the pressure on the youngster from the Soviet Union, and she now leads four games to love. Look at the depth Steffi Graf gets on those ground strokes, and then the power of that forehand, just catching Zareva totally helpless.
Well, Zareva made a good approach there and uh, tried to be a little more aggressive off the forehand, but didn't quite move well enough to cover the volley. But she's beaten some great players to get here, and it's a shame that she just hasn't been able to get a couple of games in this final. Because you can see with her attitude out there now, Betsy, she is just yeah. scared. Exactly. Well, she's ranked 15 in the world, and you don't get to be 15 in the world on our WITA computer without having some tremendous results. And she is only 17 years old, and she seems like such a younger 17-year-old than this woman, Steffi Graf, who is just so composed and mature out there. Since she's a real adult. And there it is, 40-15, another stinging forehand from Graf. You can see Zareva is always one or two steps slow to the ball. Doesn't even make an effort for that one. And there's the eight. Far it's been a absolute slaughter. Well, it looks as though Steffi Graf is going to go into the record books here because the uh, Least number of games is 13 games, as I mentioned, 1926, 6-1, 6-love. And this young lady's played well enough to go into the record books as a 6-love, six 6-love six victory, but I just feel so sorry for the young lass from the Soviet Union, but uh, she has just been overwhelmed today and is just not in the same class. You've got to give Graf credit, too, because she's continued to concentrate well, and she's trying to get this over with as quickly as possible. Well, it's one thing that champions learn at a very early age, and uh, is that you don't give anybody anything. You get on that court, you play, you match, and you get into the showers as soon as possible. It'll be interesting to see if Steffi tries to wing a couple more here. Now it's match point. 34 minutes. So in just 34 minutes of actual playing time, we take another look at match point. Steffi there being congratulated by her coach and then kissed by her father. Second time now, Steffi Graf has won the French Open back to back. Her third Grand Slam title, having also won this year in Australia. So that's two legs on 